As you may or may not know, my wife and I just got back from Vegas. It was a great trip. We ate, we drank, we had a blast. But then we got home and looked at the credit card, and uh, I gotta say, it doesn't matter how much fun you're having, 25 bucks for a drink is a ripoff. Frickin' Vegas. I hate getting ripped off, and so do the lads over at Harry's. They spent years watching the razor blade companies rip people off and said, No more! Not all heroes wear capes, my friends, and they want to prove that they're legit by offering you hot dogs a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. I've been telling you about them for months, and I'm genuinely proud to have Harry's as a sponsor of this show. I wasn't kidding. The plastic, futuristic-looking crap razors you get at the store are overpriced, and they're poor quality. Harry's blades are crisp, clean, and classy. They're the kind of razor you'd expect your grandpa to have on his bathroom counter. And most importantly, they work. Shave after shave, they're so smooth, they're precise. I used to go through the crappy store blades all the time, but Harry's are built to last. And they're not just better quality than the other names, they're more affordable. And they deliver. Just set your schedule, and for as little as two bucks, new blades, shaving creams, lotions, everything you need, right to your door when you need it. I genuinely cannot think of a reason not to try Harry's. And I'm not just saying this because they're sponsors. They're the best shaving supplies I've ever used. Try them out. And if you're not happy, your shave's on them. And unlike the other subscriptions, they're really easy to cancel if you want to, too, which is a nice bonus, but... Believe me, you're, you're not going to want to cancel. Getting ripped off isn't funny. Switch to Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. That's harrys.com slash RTG for a $3 trial set. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Remember the Game. It's my retro gaming podcast where every week a buddy of mine and I sit down and geek out about the games we played back in the day. My name is Adam Blank. Thank you guys so much for listening to the show. This week it is episode 86 and we are talking Kirby's fucking adventure for the NES. This is, dude, like I'm telling you, even if you listen, if you shit on Kirby and you're one of those people that just hate on his games... This one's worth your time, all right? We're going to explain why more in a few minutes. Bradley McHugh is here. He's back on the show. I'm really excited to talk about this one. This is this is going to be much better, a much happier episode than last week. I uh, The Echo the Dolphin fucking train wreck. And uh, thank you for the great feedback on the Echo the Dolphin episode. That was nice. Many of you agreed with me that that game is completely fucked. A couple of you claim to have beat it as kids. And I've got the FBI watching your houses now because you're clearly aliens or something super terrestrial but uh thanks for everyone that reached out and said that they didn't hate how angry i got i have a couple more episodes in the bank where i also get a little angry and lose my temper on games and i'm trying to space them out so that this show doesn't just become a toxic waste dump of negativity and profanity and me yelling into my microphone so this week's gonna be happy it's kirby's adventure it's gonna be happy i'm in a good mood. i'm in a great mood not just a, i'm fucking flying so high i uh i booked a couple of killer comedy shows this morning which is just I guess for anyone that doesn't, if by you don't know by fluke, I'm a, I'm a comic. I know I'm, I bring it up more than I probably should, but uh, I booked a couple of great shows this morning that are good pay and they're going to be good rooms, which is like, like if you get one or the other, you can live with it. If it's like a shitty crowd or a shitty room, but it pays well, you're like, I can put up with this. And if the pay isn't great, but the show is going to be really fun and you're like, all right, that'll be okay. But when it's both, that's, that's fucking gravy baby so i'm just i'm just in, i'm in such a good mood we got the prize draw out of the way this morning uh speaking of that congratulations to dave l he has been a supporter of the show since day one and i feel like he's been the runner up two or three times in the prize draw and he finally got her done so congratulations man 50 dollars gift card to the console of your choice and if you're wondering why i was 50 nobody claimed the january prize so we rolled it over into march normally i give away 25 percent of everything i earn um our Patreon is going up, uh, and I know, I like, listen, I have to talk about it. It's my job, all right? You get no advertisements. You get a free show every Wednesday. I got to talk about it a little bit. 
Uh, our Patreon went up like record high this month. So that was really fucking cool. So thank you all so much to the new people that signed up. Uh, I am going to give some Patreon shout outs this month. The list is getting too long and I don't want to quickly inhale and just bomb through all the names. So I'm just going to do about half this week, about half next week. And that way everybody gets their shout outs. Um, and I, as I've been talking about, I've been teasing a big prize for the episode 100 slash one year giveaway or one year Patreon anniversary in June. That is still the plan. I'll drop some more big details on that soon. Uh, so if you, again, if you're interested, patreon.com slash member the game, two bucks a month, you can win stuff. You get extra podcasts you get a shout out on the show. Just like the following people are going to massive. Thank you to all of my Patreons, which include, Andre, not quite the giant, Andy Baker. I know someone else named Baker that I don't really care for, but I like you, Andy. Newcomer Ashley K, welcome to the show. Ben Ben Drinkin Barlow, also newcomer to the show, ben, or the Patreon, sorry, I should say, same as Ashley. Uh, ben Bullyu, I'm sure I fucked your name up, Ben, and I'm a Habs fan. If you don't know, that's the Montreal Canadiens. They are a French hockey team. I should know how to pronounce that, but I don't. Uh, Bradley McHugh, who is your guest on this week's episode. Taco Shirt Chris, the generous man that once hooked me up with a whole bunch of GameCube games just for being, I don't know why, just because he's nice. Uh, Chris Sumner, who I think says summer every single time I read it. Daniel Brooks, who just finished recording an episode of the show with me as well. Dave L., this month's winner of the Patreon prize draw. Dave McGinnis, the cooler of the two Dave names, Dave McG. Uh, James Clark, I can't think of anything clever to say about your name, James. Jason Adams, you have a great last name. Your first name could use a little bit of work. Jeffrey Mathis, brother of our very first, I assume brother of Michael Mathis, the very first winner of our Patreon prize draw. Joe Buck, who won last month's prize draw. Joe Gillespie, who has one less win than Joe Buck. John Taylor, who's been with the show for quite a long time now. Josh from Press Start to Join. You guys should check out his podcast if you've got time. And the Ignatic... Freeze. I don't even know what that word means, if it's a real word, but freezer burnt, uh, Casey. So there's uh, some shout outs. If you didn't hear your name, you're going to get a shout out next week. I'll finish them off next week. That way they're not as spread out and I don't have to rush through them because you all deserve your 1.5 seconds in the sun. So, um, also not only is our Patreon going up, but like our downloads and I talk about it all the time, but like our downloads are still consistently every single time I log into Podbean and check how we're doing. We're up 10 to 20% over the previous two, two weeks. It's never not up there. It's fucking insane. Like, I don't know how it's happening. I don't know if more and more people are discovering the show. Like I'm legitimately like confused as to how we're getting the traffic. Like as I look at it right now, we're up 13.2% over our previous two weeks and it's always there so i mean if you're new and you're catching up like i say it like numerous times a week but like thank you guys so much like fuck like anyone that's ever started a podcast from scratch with no like celebrity endorsement or following or anything like you're like if you get 100 downloads you're like oh my god we got 100 downloads and we're getting like 3,000 downloads like we're getting over the last week we have almost 1,800 downloads in a week which is fucking insane to me so like Thank you guys are the best. I fucking I like you guys. I like you guys very much. I was gonna throw out the L word, but you know that word gets thrown around too easily today. But I, I think I might I might be falling in in L word with you guys because you are so nice to me and you support the the show as well as you do. So uh, anyway, so that's the quick talking about the game. Oh yeah, and just quickly, um, I'm trying to figure out what game we're gonna talk about on episode 100. I've got I think I'm down to two games. I just gotta figure out which one I want to do. Uh, I, I legitimately consider doing Bubsy, but we haven't given him quite the love he deserves yet. He will get eventually get his moment on the sun on this uh, show, but it won't be at episode 100. Not yet. It, uh, it'd be one or two games and they'll both be very big games. So, um, in other news, uh, they released the final fantasy seven. You guys know? Oh yeah. Quickly. I, cause I guess I should have said it six minutes ago. Uh, uh if you hate the rambling and just want to listen to us talk about Kirby, look in the description of the podcast and there's a timestamp telling you where to skip to. I, you probably wish I, if you would like to do that, you probably wish I would have told you that six minutes ago, but tough cheese. Um, they released a Final Fantasy VII remake demo uh, on the PlayStation Network yesterday, and I'll be honest, I didn't expect that. I uh, quite—I mean, maybe they'd already announced that a demo was coming, and I just missed it. But I was quite shocked that they released that, and I think that that is a uh, an awesome sign, like a phenomenal sign, because like demos are not as common as they used to be. I remember there was a time where it felt like every game got a demo, and that certainly isn't the case anymore. Um, and I won't say that I get nervous about every game that doesn't release a demo. Uh, I think that might be a little unfair, but I will say that uh, I get a lot more confident in a game when they do, because most of the time, a demo means they're confident that they're going to get good reviews, right? I mean, because like a bad demo could fucking ruin a game. 
before it comes out. And like, like with the exception of Cyberpunk 2077, uh, is that what it's? I don't actually, I don't know if I've ever said the number. I always just say Cyberpunk. But anyway, with the exception of the Cyberpunk game that's coming out in the fall, I don't know how many games have got the expectations on them that Final Fantasy VII Remake do. And so if they're dropping a demo like four weeks before that game comes out, they're like, you know what? This is this doesn't suck. We'll be okay. Here you guys go. Um, I I don't intend to play it. I think I'm just gonna hold off. I just I can't imagine the reviews of this game coming out and being so bad that I'm not just gonna buy it and play it anyways. And I just don't think I want to spoil anything for myself. I'm just gonna. Uh, I mean, it'd be different if it was one of those demos where you can play it for a little while and then it saves your your progress and, and carries it over. But that's not the case in this one. So I'm just gonna hold off on that altogether. Uh, but I did post about it on the Twitter, and I don't. I'm gonna try to do a little bit more of this. I want to read some of the feedback I got from people. Uh, by the way, at member the game on Twitter, we'll follow you back. We could be friends. Uh, I just posted is the de- the demos out. Are you gonna try it? What do you think? And some of the people that reached out were uh, stupid monkey said uh, he wanted to fire it up just to see what the control scheme is like. Um, Roem twenty one. Uh, sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, Dan. I don't fucking. I can't. I don't know how to fucking pronounce that. Uh, he said he's passing on it. He'll probably pick it up when it's about twenty bucks. Uh, he's just not fond of that episodic uh, approach, which I'm going to talk about more in a second because I don't necessarily disagree with that. He said it just seems like a way to milk money out of all of us. Um, so I don't. I don't necessarily again disagree with that at all. Uh, Darren Wright liked it. Um, I can't read all the comments. I was going to, but there's a lot of comments on here. Um, I should have, you know what? I'm going to start doing this more, but I should fucking prep a little bit instead of just going into my Twitter and fucking reading them. Uh, at goose sneaky said, uh, uh, it was okay, but I think the demo was enough for me. The melee combat system is very simple. You just hold square. I get that people are really excited for this game and I genuinely hope the full release is great, but the demo was just a bit meh and he didn't care for the voice acting. Uh, but then conversely, other people are saying that they seem, it looks absolutely incredible and they can't wait. So it seems like there's mixed feedback on the demo, but I will say that like from what I have seen, it has been more positive than negative. Uh, the combat does seem to be a bit of a sticking point with people. And I'm a little curious to see where we go with that. Like I wasn't expecting them to be original Final Fantasy seven, slow, methodical JRPG combat, but I also hope it doesn't get too actiony and like devil may cry fucking wild either. So uh, I'm going to hold off. I think I'm just, I want to go in fresh. Uh, I can't wait. Cannot fucking wait to get my hands on that game uh daniel mentioned the uh episodic thing that that irritates me too initially when they said they were remaking Final fantasy 7 they said that the game was too big and they couldn't release it on one disc so they were making it in episodes and i just don't believe that i don't fuck like get the if the witcher 3 can be released as one game and run on the switch then you could release final fantasy 7 as one game um like the bottom line is they're doing it to make more money, right? And I understand that. I mean, and I obviously understand that they can't just come out and say, well, if we release it as three or four parts, we can make three or four times more money. I get why they can't say that, but I don't buy for a second that the game is too big. Uh, having said that, one of the things that I am the most interested in is how long each uh, part of the game is. Because if you didn't know by chance, the the first, the, the part that's coming out next month only gets us through Midgar. I believe that once you leave Midgar, that is the end until part two comes out. Um, now, if I'm not mistaken, and from what I've read on the original Final Fantasy, that was like four or five hours, right? Like that's not even the end of disc one. And so if they're selling us an $80 game that's four or five hours, then of course the review, like they may as well not release part two because everyone's going to tell them to stick it up their ass. Uh... I'm curious to see, because apparently they've added a ton of meat to the bone in this game. A lot more flushing out the backstory and more stuff to do. And if we're getting like 30 hour like parts for our 80 bucks, then that's a much easier pill to swallow. So that that's my biggest thing. Far more than the the game looks rad. The voice acting I could take or leave. Um I I the combat seems to be very polarizing, but as long as it's not complete garbage, I can I don't care really. Uh, I'm there for the story of Final Fantasy VII, and I think like most of us, we just want to see a game we played as kids done up in these great big fucking high def 1080p QR HD 4K graphics or whatever the fuck it is. Uh, I want to see how long it is. I want to see if there's enough meat on the bone to justify these continuous eighty dollar purchases. I also think that they with the chapter thing that they hope to have chapter two as a launch title for the PlayStation five. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I think that that is at least what they're 
praying to, because that would be a huge fucking launch title, right? Like the Xbox Series X is going to be launching with a new Halo. And if, if PlayStation can come back with part two of Final Fantasy VII Remake, that's about as big a, you know, chip as they can fucking put in their, <laughs> what a dumb analogy. Uh, Anyway, that's about as big a bullet as they can put in their gun. So um, speaking of that too, speaking of the PlayStation 5, like I hope they've got something. I know I touch on the console launches most week. It's hard to be a video game uh, commentator these days and not be weighing in on the upcoming release of the PS5 and the Series X. But like, I hope that Sony's got something in the bank because Microsoft isn't saying much either, but they're saying a lot more than fucking Sony is. At least Microsoft has rolled out some like details on their, on their, like Sony's, <laughs> Like, Sony has not said a fucking thing. Not a thing. Like, we don't know any of the specs. We don't, like, they haven't said a, like, obviously no release date, which Microsoft doesn't know either, no price, no launch time, like, nothing. And to me, that says one of two things. Either Sony has got a monster ace hidden up their sleeves, or they are scared as fuck. Um, they've never lost. The PlayStation 3 came close because they fucked up the launch, but they recovered. They have not lost a generation, and... The longer they wait to say something, the more they come across as being nervous. Um, having said that, I ran a poll on Twitter asking, hey, are you planning to buy one of the new systems? Which one are you going to buy? 59% said the PlayStation 5. Uh, 24% said Xbox One. 15% said neither. And 2.5% said both. Uh, so, And that's 2.5% of 80 votes. So that's got to be like two people said both. So there's two rich people following me on Twitter. Uh, but the, so the 59% of the PS5, 24% to the Xbox One. So that's over two to one. People are still saying they're going to buy the PlayStation 5 over the new Xbox, uh, not the Xbox One, pardon me, the Xbox Series X. I mean, Microsoft is doing everything right going into this launch. They're releasing specs of their system. They've got the most powerful console. They're offering that smart delivery or whatever it's called now, where games that you bought on one system instantly get you get on the new system right away. Plus, they're going to be rolling out Game Pass that comes with a mountain of backwards compatible games. Plus, it's going to be launching with a new Halo game, which is their biggest gun or biggest chip in their bullet gun or whatever the fuck I was trying to say. Uh... And it's gonna have game like it's like they're doing everything they can do. Sony hasn't said a fucking thing, and their name alone has got them with twice over twice as many votes as the Series X. So I cannot wait to see how this plays out. I can't wait. Like realistically, I was thinking about it, and I'm I'm sure a lot of you that are around my I'm 36. A lot of you that are around my age are the same boat. Like I lived through the the SNES Genesis console wars, the Nintendo 64 versus the PS1, the PS2, Xbox, GameCube, Dreamcast fucking all out melee that playstation 2 dominated the ps3 xbox 360 console war and now this generation and like it's a big deal you don't get a ton of console launches in your life like i'm 36 and outside of the nes that's one two three four five generations of systems and then nintendo just doing their little weird thing where they're kind of off to the side like we don't get these that big that that many you know we don't get too many of those in our lives. So I, I'm going to keep talking about it. I'm sure lots of you guys are reading about it and following it. I'm very interested to see how this all shakes out. And I want to see which of those two companies blinks first. Cause one of them has got to fucking say something soon. It's the only other thing I could think of is the coronavirus is causing a lot of problems with development. A lot of people have been talking about like, forget the new consoles, I guess the Nintendo switch, they're running into some problems with getting parts or getting them manufactured or something. And the and coronavirus is wreaking havoc on everything, right? And obviously, it's a terrible thing and people are dying and stuff like that. Um, but, like, I, it's, I, I'm curious to know how big of an effect it's having on the PS5 and Series X launches. Like, I'm wondering if maybe that's why the companies aren't saying more and dropping dates and stuff. Because I wouldn't be completely shocked if this generation gets delayed. And it would be a huge black eye if one of these systems came or one of these companies came out and said their system's coming out like October 24th or fucking whatever. And then it, they had to delay it because of the coronavirus. So I think they're waiting to see if they can manufacture them in time to get them out before they come out and drop us with a hard date. So um, it's pretty interesting, man. I don't know. I, I think I'm going to get one. I don't know which one yet. Um, I, I, I think it's, you know, I'm saving a little bit of money right now. Just a few bucks, just putting it aside, trying to get ready. Uh, and that's another thing is it's hard for, and I'm sure lots of people like me can't just go out and buy a, a fucking $600, $700 system on a whim. Like if you're going to buy one, you got to save for it. And it's hard to be saving your money for something when you don't know how much it's going to be or when it's coming out or which one you're going to buy or anything like that. It's, you know, it's, it's very weird that they've got these huge, super expensive systems coming out potentially in six or seven months and aren't saying anything. So, um, having said that, I think I'm leaning slightly toward a series X, but because of Game Pass. But we'll see. We'll fucking, we'll see. We'll see. 
Uh, what are we at for time? Holy fuck. Okay, I got to go quick. Uh, you know what? No, I'll talk about that. No, you know what? Fuck it. I'll talk about it right now. Uh, a sealed copy of Mega Man sold last week for like 40 grand. And I don't understand, I think. And I don't, I just don't get that. Like, I get game collecting fucking totally. I, I totally understand why people collect old video games. I don't understand why you'd buy sealed copies of old video games. That's just me, but I'm like, that's just, it's a game you can't play. Like, it, what if someone opened it, got the game out and stuff, and then just put a note inside that says, haha, and then managed to reseal it properly? Like, it's, I just, I can't imagine having $40,000 to drop on a game that I can't play without taking away $39,500 of its $40,000 value. I just, I think you're crazy, frankly, if you're spending that. And and I feel comfortable saying that because nobody listening to this is spending $40,000 on a video game they can't play. And if you are, you better goddamn well be supporting us on Patreon for two bucks a month too. So like I'm sitting here trying to decide if I'll be able to afford to drop like 600 bucks on a video game system in the fall. And you're dropping a hundred times that on a 35 year old game that you can't play. What the fuck? That's... I mean, that said, it is Mega Man, and Mega Man is awesome. So I can I can get behind. I guess I can get I can get on board with supporting Mega Man, just not for forty thousand dollars. Fuck. Anyway, this has gone on long enough. I used to play a ton of Mega Man when I was a kid, but I have not played Mega Man this week. What have I been playing? You ask. Well, I'll tell you. I uh, I finished the Halo Two campaign on the Master Chief Collection. By the way, the Master Chief Collection is fucking dope. Apparently, it had problems to start, but it is really, really good now. And I don't want to say anything really about the Halo 2 campaign because we have an episode recording scheduled to talk about it for a future episode. But uh, man, just great memories. Fucking Halo 2. So uh, I am still playing Sonic Mania. It's been like a month. I'm still playing it that I, I can't stop. That Patreon episode is going live on Monday where I review Sonic Mania. And I just want to let you guys know it's going to be very, 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 very positive. So if you want to hear a diehard Nintendo fan, come on and say something incredibly nice about sega fucking that's gonna happen on monday for the that patreon episode sonic mania is the tits uh and then as many of you may or may not know i picked up a playstation 4 recently i used one off a friend of mine and one of the rad things about jumping into a gaming gener- generation or console like super late in its lifespan is the cheap games i did that with the playstation 3 and got stuff like last of us and uncharted and those games for like 10 bucks each at EB games or whatever. And, uh, I, I had a PS4 from the launch and sold it a few years ago. And now I've recently jumped back in and I'm catching up on some of the exclusives that I've never played. I picked up the horizon zero dawn, the complete edition for 20 bucks, brand new. And I am really digging it. It's fucking really good. And Ori two Ori in the will of the wisps comes out next week. And I can't wait to play that. So I'm trying to finish horizon before Ori comes out. Cause like, dude, once Ori two comes down, I tweeted about this. Listen to the next three months. Ori and the Willow of the Wisps, uh, Resident Evil 3 Remake, Doom Eternal, Animal Crossing, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, Gears Tactics, Last of Us 2. Those are just some of the games that I'm interested in over the next three months. That's fucking, boy, it's a good time to be a gamer, man. It is a good time to be a gamer. Oh, yeah, and then fucking around the corner, we've got two new systems in Cyberpunk waiting for us. So, Jesus, man. Anyway, that's what I've been playing this week. Let me tell you about what I was playing uh, a month ago, or I guess not, I just read the word a month. Uh, fuck, that, that would have been so smooth and I fucked it up. Let me tell you about what I was playing almost 30 years ago, and that's Kirby's Adventure, okay? And listen, Kirby gets a lot of hate, and I even mostly get why he gets the hate. His games are easy, and he clearly refuses to address his blatant eating disorder and his morbid obesity, and he's just toying with his health, and I can understand how you would hate him for that. Um, I have not played a Kirby game in 20 years. Uh, I use them in Smash a little bit, but other than that, I've never, I just, I don't, I know the games are for babies. They're for little kids. I get it. You know, they surely they look nice, but I have no interest in spending my money to play a fucking game that I can play through literally as I'm sleeping. Uh, but he used to have great games, even for adults. I'm telling you guys, Kirby Superstar, Kirby Superstar on the Super Nintendo is fucking awesome. And damned if Kirby's adventure on the NES isn't the best Kirby game ever made. Like, it is right there with Mario 3, Ninja Turtles 2, the Mega Mans. That's like some of the best stuff the NES has to offer. My guest is Bradley McHugh this week. He's returning to the show. And we are going to tell you why I'm going to cue some music. And we are going to talk about Kirby's Adventure that originally released on the Nintendo Entertainment System all the way back on March 23rd, 1993. Kick back, relax, eat some of your enemies and use their powers against them. And let's talk fucking Kirby. Here we go. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. 
Everyone that listens to this podcast knows about our illustrious CEO, my dog Molly. But the other silent partner behind the scenes is my wife. And let me tell you, my friends, a 17-year relationship with another person that has to talk to and live with you is a lot harder to maintain than one with a dog. We've had our ups and downs, and as you all know, a relationship isn't all sunshine and rainbows. They can be a lot of work. You get out what you put in when it comes to relationships, and talking to a therapist can be a fantastic way to put in some work. They can help you work through your issues, learn to communicate better, and even just provide you with an ear to bend when you need it. I've talked to my therapist about my relationships, especially when it came to my stand-up comedy career and how much I was away from home, and they helped me work on ways to keep my relationships strong even when I was out on the road. Uh, it turned out our relationship was actually better when I was out on the road, but that's that's a story for another day. And I know, right? Therapy. Who has the time these days? BetterHelp hears you, and they're making it easy. Fill out a quick form online, and they'll match you up with a therapist that suits your needs and that'll work around your schedule. You pick the meet times, and you can get your therapy fix from anywhere over video, phone, or just chat. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash RememberTheGame today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash RememberTheGame. So, okay, yeah, this is not Kirby's Dreamland. This is, okay, listen, like, we're never doing Kirby's Dreamland on the show ever. Why not? Because uh, I've talked about it before, but when I was a little kid, that was the very first game that I ever bought with my own money. I saved my money up, I saved my money up, I saved my money up, all my birthday money, all my Christmas money, all that stuff. And I was so excited, and my mom took me to Toys R Us, and I was allowed to buy a game, and I thought about it, thought about it, and finally went with Kirby's Dreamland for the Game Boy. And I beat it an hour after I got home. Yeah, it's it's short. I remember I got it on the, the 3DS uh, eShop yeah. a few years ago. And then I was like, oh, yeah, because I, 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 I'm i a big Kirby fan. I love Kirby. Sure. And I was like, all right, Kirby Streamline. I, I know this is the first one. I've never really played it. And then like an hour later, I was like, oh, shit, now what? It's so easy. And it broke my heart because that, yeah. was, that, that was all my money. Yeah. And I was like, well, I'm not going to just beat this again. Like yeah. it's just <laughs> – and I didn't play it until after I played Kirby's Adventure. And that's why I bought it because I thought, listen, the bottom line, like there are people listening to this that don't like Kirby. Yeah. All right. There, I know. And I know that in, in not even in recent years, in the last 20 years, Kirby has become the baby game on most consoles. Like they're not that hard. Yeah. A lot of them I, are I easy. remember there was a, f- a few years ago that uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn yeah. came out on the week. I guess, ooh, I guess that was like a decade ago now. But um and I remember when that first came out, I bought it first day because I love Kirby. You can't get hurt in yeah. that game. They, they've become the baby game. Yeah. That's Cur- what they Cur- are. Kirby and Yoshi. Yeah, and like, Yoshi. Because yeah. Yoshi, like, uh, I also, like, because I'm such a big Yoshi's Island fan, um, I'll always buy Yoshi games. Like, I got the, was it Yoshi's Woolly World? Uh, uh, for the Wii or for the Switch? For the Switch, yeah. Uh, that, Yoshi's Crafted World. Yeah, Yoshi's Crafted World. Right, right, yeah. right, right. right. Um, I got that, and I was... I, and I'll always buy it. I'll yeah. always buy it, knowing full well it's never going to be as good as it was. No, no. And yeah, Yoshi's Crafted World. Like fucking, I could, I could have played that game with my eyes closed. It was it's, so. Bo- I bought that one too. It was so boring. It looks boring. gorgeous, but it was so boring. In- incredible looking game. But like, um, as far as Kirby's Dreamland goes, um, I almost think there's no excuse for that game because I know that that was um, uh, Sakurai's like baby. It was like his first big game that he directed himself, right? And it, it, like it was his baby, um, and so they just wanted to get it out, right? They just wanted to get it out. But if you look at something that came out, it might have been the year after, or maybe a couple years after. But look at Link's Awakening. They got a full fucking oh, fledged Zelda game yeah. into the game, dude, board. and even even Pokemon. Like, look at look how giant that even game is. Kirby's Dream Land two and three are both decent games. Well, three was on Super Nintendo though, right? Uh, because that's, that's that's one with all the ride ride alongs. Yeah, like, I don't where remember. you can ride the hamster. But but I, but I, I do remember there was another Kirby on Game Boy that wasn't terrible yeah. compared to the and the first one like two. the first one looks good, plays well. Yeah, it's just so easy, and I know that Kirby's become the baby game of systems but listen yeah. if you and I, listen i understand if you've written off kirby i understand i get it i totally understand if you own a switch if you own uh the nintendo classic uh kirby's adventure is on there on and both, like yeah. and listen like 
this was like th- this to my while Kirby Superstar for the Super Nintendo might be better, but I'm actually I'm actually I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you there for a second. I actually disagree. Um, Kirby's Adventure means so much to me. Oh, like, it's it's now like but listen like because I love it too. I had yeah. it as a kid. I played through it. I loved it. I beat it. I actually played through it last year on the Switch. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I would say it's better than Kirby Superstars because I feel like Kirby Superstars it's it's that classic Super Nintendo upgrade where it looks beautiful and it yeah doesn't ju- Kirby's Adventure fucking chugs. There yeah. are times where it is like you can tell that it's the NES is like hey I, like. I can't. Okay, like I don't, I don't know if I don't know if I can handle all this. Right, guys. like yeah. for my money, Kirby's Adventure is is, I mean, it's certainly one of the best games on the NES. Was was Superstar the game the first game where you could combine two powers? Uh, or was that or was that Kirby sixty four? I think. Uh, I, no, I think it could combine them in Kirby yeah. Superstar. I, I, Kirby I've, Superstar was like eight or nine games in one. It yeah, was like a big mishmash. I've, I've played. I've played. All of like most of most of the Kirby games, but right? I don't really remember. It's been a while since I played Superstar, right. which I also love. By sure. the way, it's still one of my oh, favorite games. Like for sure, it, it, this isn't going to sound as sac like, I, and maybe this might sound like sacrilege, but it's not to me. Kirby's Adventure to Kirby Superstar is akin to Super Mario Three to Super Mario World. Like yeah, it's I'll it's just a that. preference thing, you know what I mean? But they're both great games, and I know Kirby's lost his way in recent times and gotten easy and baby blah 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 blah. Kirby's Adventure is a good. Not even it's a great fucking game, and it's got a decent difficulty level. I don't think it ever gets hard, but it does have a decent difficulty curve at the very least. It does. Whereas, Absolutely. like, um, um, some of the later Kirby games, there's actually one that I really like, and I'm trying to remember what it's called. But there's one that's like it's uh, Squeak Squad, I think it's called, and it's a uh, it's like it's a Metro- Metroidvania style Kirby game. Okay, it's really really good. But anyway, I digress. All right, uh, it's kind of like Great Great Cave Offensive. Okay, yeah, okay. Offensive. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love um, that mode. Kirby? That's that's the best mode in Kirby Superstar, and if the whole game was that, like, yeah, I agree with that. It would be it would be like top ten tier. I agree with that. But um, Kirby's Adventure is good because it's such a simple game. This is also a game that I've been playing a lot this week. Right. Um, and this is because uh, I don't want to. We were talking about a very difficult game on the other podcast. I don't know which one's going to come out. First, yeah, so I don't want to spoil it. Yeah. Um, we were talking about another very difficult game right before we did this podcast. Yeah. And I was going back and forth between the two games because. Oh, this Jesus. game's this game's so easy. Yeah, yeah, like it it's is. so easy. And like <laughs> the but, other game was making me feel like I was shitty at video games. Yeah, <laughs> but the thing about it is like Kirby's Adventure is easy, but not in the same sense as like more modern Kirby games, where it's almost like you you can't lose. Yeah, and like, you can, you absolutely cannot lose. Right, you have to win. Right. Whereas in Kirby's Adventure, you can lose. I do think a majority of the deaths, at least personally, that I suffer in Kirby's Adventure, I suffer because of the slowdown, mm-hmm. the lag, because the game. You can tell that this game, like this game, came out near the end of the NES's life, uh, and and this game pushed that thing past to the, the limit. limit. Yeah, like it was just. But but to be fair, I think it's one of the best looking, one of the most um, adventurous games on the system, and yeah. it's a fun platformer. Well, and the thing is, is like you could say that this game is linear, which it is. You know, each world there's level one, two, three, four, five, sure. and six, and then a boss fight. But between all these levels, you get like sort of these fun little mini games yeah. that I that I love. Like there's the one where um, you you have to draw the sword or whatever on Chef oh the Kawasaki. quick draw yeah. oh yeah, fuck yeah, yeah dude. And then there's like there's the crane one which I love yeah and the crane one is good because you have the big the giant Kirby and then two little Kirby's and I think the little Kirby's get you a better prize but I'm like the giant Kirby's just so enticing and easy you to have get. to you so have to go you, for the giant you just Kirby. go for it yeah. yeah I love that because like it's like this game came out I mean I'm not I might be talking out of my ass I'm 90 percent sure this game came out after Super Mario three. Uh, it 90%. did, yeah. Th- th- this game came out in 1993. Yeah, so it um, came out after Mario 3. Well and they, after, yeah. And they clearly took, like, not... I mean, there's the same company. It's Nintendo. Um, but, like, it's not just level 1 to level 2 to level 3. Each world has, like, a... Instead of it being, like, a map that you, like, n- navigate, it it starts out as, like, all you can do is go into door 1 in a world. And then that's the first level. And then as you beat that level, more of that, that stage, like, that world opens up. opens up. And now you can go to a different and you can't go from like level one to level four like you've got to go in the order there but like you said there's bonus levels and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and like to me that's where there's not as much linearity because in all especially in the later worlds there's a ton of hidden exits and hidden like little secrets that you have to go into to open up secret things on the overworld map and stuff like that yeah and and that's the only way to get 100 percent because it tells you your percentage on the file select screen yeah and like i remember the first time i beat it i beat it and it was like 72 percent and i was like god 
damn it, I have to go back and, and, and do honestly, this again. some of the secrets are really hard to find. Yeah. Like I like I played through this again for the first time, I don't know, about a year ago. Mm-hmm. And uh I never 100%ed it. Like, I didn't want to look up where anything was. Yeah. But I was 100%ing it for about the first four worlds, like, easy. And I was like, all right, there we go. And well, then my, all of a sudden, I missed something. I was like, what the fuck? Where did I miss that? Well, like, my first um, my first exposure to this game was actually the the remake on Game Boy Advance, uh, Nightmare in Dreamland. Okay. Um, which is just, it's just the same game. And Nightmare in Dreamland actually adds something cool. If you get 100%, you can actually replay the whole game as Meta Knight, which is pretty t- Oh, that's pretty, pretty rad. Pretty t- I love Meta Knight. I don't know if that's in the NES version. I'm pretty sure it's not. I've no, never I don't think it is. No. The NES version. Um, um, but uh, it does go. It does go to say this game does have a fucking beautiful looking remake that you can play on Game Boy Advance. That's pretty rad. Um, but there's so like every level in this game has so much detail to it. It really like, does. Yeah, like like a crazy amount of detail where you're looking at it and you're like, how do they even achieve this on the NES? Like uh, you look at the backgrounds, like some, and that's something that I try not to do in video games because it's distracting. Like for instance, like Mario Kart. You ever just stop and look at the background? Yes, and it's, I it, yeah, it's amazing. You can get lost you. in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm looking at a screenshot of it right now, and like it, it almost looks like it. It looks al- almost Super Nintendo. It's not quite Super Nintendo, but it's, it's like close. Yeah. it. It looks like an eight bit game on the Super Nintendo. You, you like, know, you know that then when they were looking at the cartridge and they were looking at the final demo of this game, somebody at Nintendo was like, "Do we just put this fucking thing on the Super Nintendo?" Like, yeah. uh, like I don't know. It's pretty phenomenal that like it, it, that they were able to get this game to run. And again. Like, they were able to get it to run, but the fucking lag in this game at times... Dude, there's, like, secrets where you have to, like... And this is... And we'll get into this in a minute. But there's secrets where you, like, you get a fire ability and you have to light a rope, then run to the end of that rope and jump into the cannon that that rope is going to. Yeah, yeah. So it'll shoot you to a secret. And sometimes you can't get there just because the fucking leg starts jerking (laughs) you around because the game is like, well, there's four bad guys coming at you. And each of those four bad guys has a different power you could swallow and take if you want. Plus Mm -hmm. that rope is burning at the bottom. Plus we've got this gorgeous background fucking move. And it's just... It's just, you can tell that the Nintendo just can't keep up. And that what, gets frustrating. You know what p- does piss me off about this game? And, and like, again, I love this game so much. It's really good. But there is one thing about it that really pisses me off. And it's the only reason it pisses me off is because I'm a baby who's been babied by Kirby right. uh, over the past 20 years. Uh, and like Super Smash Brothers and how Kirby controls in that game. Yeah. Is that to fly in this game, you have to push up instead of just tapping A. Yeah, it's you know? weird. And so, like, I- I'm so used to just tapping A that sometimes I'll just do it, and yeah. then he'll just hop, and I'll be like, no, 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 no. Yeah, and it takes a lot of... Cliff. That's a huge adjustment. I don't understand why they did that. Like, yeah. A jumps, up flies. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck? Why does it just... <laughs> and like you said, most... I bet you anything, there are more people that have played as Kirby in Smash than there are people that have played Kirby's Adventure. Absolutely. And on yes. Smash, it's not up. Yeah. It's jump. Yeah, right? it's the same same button as jump. It's just We're, fucking yeah. weird. I just, I don't know. And that's the other thing is like, I feel like this was one of the games where the flying didn't break the game because you can't just fly across the level and beat it. Yeah, you're going to so get many, shot by cannons. There's and, so many bad guys that can get you up there. And yeah, flying enemies, like the the little pink guys with the little wings. Yeah. I, ne- I, I don't know what the names of the enemies. I know like Waddle D and Waddle Do. Yeah, and um, then I know DDD. Yeah, that's all I know. I, is know I just know the ones that were in the, like that were named in the cartoon. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, um, which is a banger, by the way, that everybody forgot about. I fucking love that cartoon. I never even knew there was a cartoon. Yeah, it's called Kirby Right Back at You. It's good. <laughs> oh, fuck. I bet. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's crazy to me that, like, I. I don't understand how Kirby became one of Nintendo's core franchises when you could quite legitimately argue that the best Kirby game was on the NES. Yeah. Like that they have not been... Like imagine if they had... And they're still making them, yeah. I know. He comes out on every system. But like imagine if they had not been able to top Mario since Mario 3. Like would he still... Or Zelda... Like yeah. would would they still be like the like Kirby? They haven't, but but for some reason I don't know if I think a lot of it has to do with Smash. I I and, think I think so too. And um and here's the thing about Kirby is that like with Mario they they've never really topped uh Super Mario World, and with Zelda they've never topped Link to the Past in my opinion. I, but on a, in a two D sense, I agree. Yeah, but that being said. Every game that they come out with in those franchises, or at least a lot of them, are still very, very good. Oh, yeah, dude. Kirby games now, really forgettable. As a diehard Nintendo fanboy, 
I don't remember the last time I was excited about a Kirby game. Yeah. Like when I saw that Kirby was coming, like anytime there's a new Mario game, I'm like, oh my God. Is, but is, Kirby, there, is there a Kirby game on the Switch? I, I feel like I don't even know. Oh, I don't. yeah. Yeah, there is. It's uh, Star Allies or whatever. I never yeah, played it. There you yeah. go. There's the point, right? Yeah. And, I, and I think there's like a free one that you can download on Switch, but I would never play that. I don't know how he became one of their mascots other than the thing is, is Nintendo is a kid system. And and they and they they put out a game for kids every year. And again, he's he is so legitimately in the top five characters that I think of when I think of Smash. I don't play as him, but when you're just like, hey, who are the Smash staples? He he's, would be one of the ones yeah, that well, pops he's, he's up. The, in he's my the head. main character in the story mode of the the newest. Yeah, Smash exactly. Players. Right, yeah, Smash Ultimate is um, like the main character. I, dude, and you know what really sucks is he's fallen so far into being the guy for kids games that if they released one that was really hard now. I think it would probably get shit on because parents would buy it for their kids that love the easy Kirby games and then they would get mad that it's too hard. Yeah. It sucks because he's totally capable of being in a hard game. Kirby's adventure, like you said, it's certainly not like it's not gonna you're going to beat it. But it's not it's not brain dead yeah, yeah. float you, through. You will have to think about you will die in this game. You totally will. Yeah, yeah a couple and, of times. Maybe and, not that much, but you will die. Particularly if you want to try to get all of the extras and all the secrets and stuff like that. Yeah, you know what I, I mean? Absolutely. Um I also uh want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the power ups in this game because this is like the first game that had like such a plethora of power ups. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I th- was there <laughs> even power ups in Kirby Streamline? I feel like there wasn't. I, I feel like this was like the first game that you could swallow. Enemies, yeah, I don't think I, you, I, I might be wrong. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, um, I, yeah you might be right. Yeah, because because the whole idea of him being Kirby was initially just that he could he could suck stuff up and then yeah. blow it out. And that okay, so like there you go. Like that's one of my big things about Kirby because like I've always loved the Mega Man series, and yeah. as a kid, I never owned a Mega Man game. I yeah. was rented them. I never owned one, but I always i was so fascinated with the idea of taking a bad guy's weapon and being able to use it like i just i like borderline it's like a borderline fetish for me i just think it's so awesome it's two two ends of the spectrum there for sure they one of the easiest franchises one of the hardest absolutely yeah. but like i loved that concept and when i got a hold of this game and realized that like like it's to the point where like when you're a bad guy that i can't take your power i usually don't even try to kill you unless yeah, i'm killing I, you with another power i'm like leave me alone well, you're and, and sometimes suck. some of these characters in this game they, they're they won't even try to hurt you yeah so they're just so you're like why would i oh. yeah it's just like a bird and you're like i'm gonna eat that bird like yeah. fuck him yeah <laughs> whereas like any guy that you can take a power like i am constantly switching my power in this game just yeah. because it's so they're all fun like they I, are all fun. Like and some of them are basic, right? Like there's you can you can blow the fire beam out your front the or ice. the ice. You can swing your giant laser beam. There's the sword. The sword one. There's and the, that's um, that's one I think I use the most. The sword? It's not yeah, it's not Me my too. favorite one. We'll get to that in a minute. But okay. it's, it's not my favorite one. But I, it's probably the one I use the most because it's so readily available all the time. I love the sword. Al- although I love the the spin cutter, like the boomerang. Oh yeah, yeah, um, that, yeah. That's one of my favorites. Too. That's my favorite. Is this like you can throw? It's like a giant blade, and you yeah. fucking throw it like a boomerang. That's my favorite weapon. Yeah. Or this, the reason I love this sword so much, partially it's because you can see him carrying the sword, and he looks cool, and partially because when you jump and then use the sword, he just turns into a ball with a swinging sword all around him. Yeah. And I love that. Plus, there's the boss fight where you fight Meta Knight. And I fucking, oh, to this day, I think it's so rad. Yeah. You go into this room and Meta Knight like appears up like on a ledge, or, like on a ledge and like throws you a sword and the sword like gets stuck in the ground and it just says grab it and yeah. you have <laughs> to take the sword and then you fight him like a sword fight. And I just think that's so cool. Yeah, it's, such, like, it's such a wicked idea. And I also think this is the first game that had Meta Knight. Probably is. But the weird thing about this game that would then bleed into a lot of Kirby games later on is that they they must have known that they kind of wanted him to be an anti-hero because sometimes he'll show up and be like, get him, boys. Yeah, and then yeah. all these dudes will show up to try and kill you with like uh, chain mail or whatever. Or sometimes he'll show up and be like, here's a one-up. Yeah, Meta Knight's, yeah. it's funny because like Kirby is obviously such a kid's franchise. And Kirby, like Kirby... It, it's all he's almost like it's almost sickening how obviously he was designed for children yeah a little cute pink fat ball with pink shoes well this is also this is also the first kirby game that ever had color and right. so this is the first time he's ever depicted right as right pink but it's so obvious that that's what it is right yeah. but then but then this meta knight comes along and like like when you think of like when I like when you think of like with the shadow the hedgehog is supposed to be like the anti hero of this Edgy. Uh, and Edgy. he sucks. You're like, dude, you look like you look stupid. You have rollerblades <laughs> and guns. You're a fucking loser. <laughs> Whereas like Meta Knight just seems like I'm sure underneath the cloak and everything, he's not that cool. But he just seems so badass. Well, like, like I, I think about like a lot of video game franchises and how they have like uh, uh most most video games will have like 
the main character and then a character that like counters them like in Zelda there's Dark Link and yep. um in in Mario there's Wario or Dark Samus Dark Samus yeah but if you think about those characters realistically they're just the same thing maybe Wario's a bit of a uh, a step away from yeah, you, Mario. You fucking be you. You walk on thin ice. If you fucking <laughs> shit on Wario around me. Yes, but yeah, I understand what you're saying though. But like, yeah, they're like they're pretty similar. Whereas Meta Knight, they're like we need to have a we need to have a contrast to Kirby, but he's got to be different enough. Yeah, yeah. Because like there, it is. I don't know if you've ever seen him. In, in fact, in this game, I think you see him without his mask, and it's just he's just like a yeah, a, he's just like a black just a black Kirby. circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. Just, he's just Kirby. He's yeah. the same species as Kirby, but he has the cape and the mask, and he is always wielding his really cool like jagged sword. Yeah, yeah. So like they really put some time and effort into being like we want to make it uh, like a like a contrast. And Meta Knight's a cool name. It's yeah. not like they didn't just call him Dark Kirby or Night Kirby or something. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, there's like um, I'm I'm trying to think about. It. There's like some canon lore that Kirby was also one of those knights at one point. Like his name was like Light Knight or something like that. Oh, okay. And uh, and he was just like, fuck this, I don't want to be part of this anymore. Oh, I didn't um, know that. Yeah. There's also like, if you ever look into the canon of this game, there is it's pretty pretty buck crazy. See, and like, like, I, like why can't they do that? But again, yeah. if they tried to do it now, they'd probably like he's stuck. He's pigeonholed into being the kid guy. He's, yeah, we're uh, stuck. Absolutely. Uh okay, sorry. So we were talking about the power-ups. Those are some of the cool power-ups. My favorite is the cutting blade thing. I like the cutting blade. What's your favorite? My favorite and it's I think it's only in a couple of levels is the UFO one. Oh yeah, yeah. Where, you, where you can fly around in the little UFO and shoot little lasers. He literally turns into a UFO. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The only thing I hate about the UFO is that you, it's the only weapon you can't take out of a stage. Oh yeah, you gotta which, you gotta ditch it to go through a door. Which makes sense. It would make some of this game incredibly oh, easy. Oh, if you could play UFO the whole game. Yeah. Oh fuck. It would be, be so easy. But as soon as because like you go through the final, you, you know, like uh, when you get to the end of the level and there's a door and there's a big star above yeah. it instead of just the door. Yeah. Um, and then you're like, oh cool, I'm at the end of the level. You go through that door as the UFO, and as soon as you get to that um, little mini game at the end, yeah, you're just Kirby again. Oh um, fuck. Yeah, I guess yeah. I guess yeah, that would break it. But. Yeah. I, the, I do I do love that little mini game at the end of each level though, where it's like. Press A uh, when it's yeah, far down. It's as like it goes. a slingshot, and yeah. you have to hit A as far down as possible without him to coming fire back him up. back up in the air. Yeah. And I here's the thing: is that I sometimes get one, sometimes I get seven. I could never quite figure out the exact timing for it. No, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, I I got the the one ups and stuff, but it was just luck. Like, yeah, it was just yeah. Every every like three or four times I'd get it, and I'm like, all right, we yeah. we got her. They do they do such a good job in this game, and this is uh of making all. I mean, minus one or two. Of making all the abilities uh, feel different, like yeah. when I, there's the odd like the parasol feels a lot like the sword, but even that he runs around with a with an umbrella instead of a sword, and when he falls, he takes the umbrella out and floats like yeah. Mary Poppins or something, yeah. which I think is really cool. Like you said, there's the beam, there's the fire, there's the ice, the UFO. You can turn into a tire. I love the tire. It yeah. almost oh, plays yeah. like a. It almost feels like an NES Sonic. Yeah, where he it, does it this kind of cheap sometimes. It absolutely yeah. does. <laughs> uh, you can get stuff like the wrestler. I yeah. love the wrestling yeah, suplex when you, gra- when you grab them and you toss them over. Right, yeah. like that's so sick. There's, there's that. There's like you can get the mic. I oh the mic one where you only get three attacks. Yeah, you can only use it three times, but it basically wipes out the whole screen. What I love about that is the first one he screams into like a megaphone, and then the second time he's got like a microphone like in a mic stand, and then the third time he's got like that big classic Mo- mohawk. Fu- yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like I, I think that like just those little touches. This only lasts for like one second. It's yeah. just your attack animation, and then it's gone. But like they really try, like you know what? I, I don't care. I'm gonna come across as a Nintendo fanboy because I am a Nintendo fanboy. Agreed. This game's got that Nintendo, that Nintendo polish. Like I they agree, did yeah. everything they could to just put every little detail in and make it just. I fucking I love that. Like it makes so much. It has replay value because you can play with different attacks. Yeah, like and, that alone. And with with this game, like I honestly believe this is maybe maybe with the exception of Super Mario Brothers three, probably my favorite NES game. Yeah. Um, because because it, it like I, I like this game so much because it doesn't really feel like an NES game. It really like, doesn't. It really feels like it should be on something more advanced than the NES. Yeah. Um, but they were able to fit it all onto that big old big old eight what was it eight megabyte cartridge yeah, I whatever think so, it was yeah. you know and, and they they were really able to make it work with the space that they had and it has like I mean it's got the save files like thank fuck oh, you know like yeah I mean oh, and if, automatic saves. Yeah, automatic saves. If there's a a criticism of the historic Super Mario Brothers three, it could have desperately used save files. Yes, absolutely. whereas like this one has it right. Uh, this game, 
it, like you know what I like about playing this game now too is whether you play it on the Switch or on your on your virtual consoles or on the uh, anything the NES Classic they left all that lag in there yeah and I feel like as frustrating as it can occasionally be. I'm like that's it needs it like that's part of its charm. Yeah, like, absolutely. Other otherwise you're playing a different game. Right. Um one thing I don't like about the save function of this game though, and this is why I like having it on the Switch, um using like save states when I turn the game off. Yeah. Is that if you've occurred like or is that the right word? No, uh, maybe. Yeah, it sounds right. Yeah, well, sure. If you've got a bunch of one-ups um, and then you turn the game off. You'll turn it back on, and you'll be exactly where you were. But right. it took it takes all your one ups away. Yeah, and it gives you and, and it starts you off with three. That's why every time I stop playing this game, bam, right into the uh, right into the save save slot yeah. on the uh, uh, what's it called the save state. Yeah, the save yeah. state. Yeah, 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 right onto the save state it, so that I can keep those. Because uh, you're right, because yeah. it's so easy to collect one ups. And yeah. then you lose them all. But luckily, the game's not really hard enough to worry about. No, it. no, no. Like not I'm at listen. All. Like I'm not trying to sound like a bad. Near the end, like I die a few times. Like this, a yeah. couple of the boss fights can be a little bit, a little bit of a challenge. Well, and I think, I think the big thing with this game is that if you go into a boss fight with a power up, sometimes, and maybe this is just me, sometimes you can overthink how powerful your power up yeah. is and you're like oh I've got a sword I'm just going to stand right next to this guy and just hit him with the sword over and over again but that tactic doesn't really no, work no and but you see and again like that's to me that's one of the great things about this game is that other than stuff like the UFO you can go into a boss fight with pretty much any power and each power is going to attack this boss completely differently mm -hmm. like a, and like you said if you've got something that shoots from a distance compared to if you've got the sword and you have to run up right against them and fucking attack them. And, and uh, it completely changes the way you make the game. And what I love about it is if this isn't working for you, if this power isn't working, then you hit select, you drop the power, it just turns into that giant heart, uh, star bouncing around. Yeah. Then you can at least swallow that star or breathe the star in and spit it at him and do a bunch of damage that way. Yeah. I love that, that, that is, mechanic. That is the, the way to damage an enemy like the most yeah and i love that mechanic that they're yeah. like all the powers just make it different but even if you don't have a cool power there's tons of stuff that you can just swallow and spit at bad guys and like you said most of the bosses including ddd you have to uh wait for him to produce those giant stars yeah and then suck up the stars and then spit them at them let's, and i love yeah. that concept let's talk about some of the bosses in this game because there's a lot of mid bosses in yeah. this game but then there's there's even some even cooler bosses but let's talk about some mid bosses um there's a lot of really cool ones. My favorite might be like the walrus that shakes his ass at you. Yeah, the ice and then, walrus. And then he and then he pops it over. Um, but then yeah, you also have like the big wrestler guy who also I love with the overalls. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the giant bug. Yeah, that fucking giant. That oh yeah, bug yeah, used, yeah that's, that bug scared me as a kid. Yeah, that's He's, one thing. I think the one that I'm thinking of might be from a different game. But yeah, yeah, the the bug, the bug is wicked. Fucking scared me when yeah. I was little. And there's like a isn't there like a giant tire? Yeah, yeah, there is that a, there's a giant you. tire, and and if you jump over it, it'll hit the wall and it'll spaz out on the floor for a second, yeah. giving you just enough time to hit him. There's the fucking uh, that laughy guy that throws bombs at you. Oh, that like just oh. hops around. Yeah, his name's like Bomb Jack. Or I something fucking like hate that, that guy, yeah, but so, something like that. They never get old because they're they're like they're like the Kirby version of Boom Boom. But there's four or five of them, and they, mm -hmm. they they never I never got tired of fighting them. Well, yeah, and then and then every world has a different like really unique boss fight. Yeah. And I want to talk about one that I think is just, is just my favorite and maybe my favorite boss fight in any Kirby game. And I w I'm wondering if it's your favorite as well. Uh, but we'll uh, see. It's the one where it's the sun and the moon. Okay, and no, like, it's not. But and okay. like the sun will be up here. It will be uh, on the top of the screen and the moon will be uh, on the foreground and the sun will attack producing the stars. Yeah, yeah. And that's the only way to hurt the moon while it's standing and then they'll swap places. Yeah, and I love that mechanic. You fight both of them what, like, and they keep switching back and forth. And every time they switch, the whole screen switches. Yeah. It goes from daytime to nighttime. And then while you're fighting one on the ground, the other one's attacking you from the, the sky. And that, like when it switches between day and night, that's the exact polish that I'm talking about. Yeah, man, that this game has. I, I, you're, I forgot about that fight. There is one I like better, but I love that. Hit, fight hit me too. with yours. Hit me with yours. Uh, the painter, the skating painter. Oh yeah, I do like that one. There, yeah. There's this dude. He's on like like old school roller skates. Yeah. And he like skates from like canvas to canvas, painting shit. And then you get to swallow up because whatever he paints comes to life. Yeah. And then you've got to swallow that up and spit it yeah. at him. I, I do. I do love that boss too. And uh, I think I think that character ends up being playable in Kirby 64, right? I never played Kirby 64. Oh, Kirby 64 is good. Uh, um, there's so many 60... Uh, we'll get it. 64, I could do a whole other fucking 
show on. <laughs> um, some of the boss fights are really there's like that big fly, floating like electrical cloud with the eyeball in it. Oh yeah, I love um, that you have to high jump into. Yeah, but you have to be careful because he has he, like he'll have spikes that he uh, retracts. Yeah, and you got to hit him when he's not got the spikes out. They do a good job of making like the only boss fight that sucks is the shitty tree. And that's fine because he's just there to kind of yeah, be takes, the first level boss. Takes five seconds. He's such yeah. a weenie. But the yeah. rest of them are all cool. Like you said, that cloud guy, you're literally jumping up into the sky fighting him. Yeah. Meta Knight, they give you a sword and you got to have a sword fight with yeah, him. Yeah, exactly. Which is so rad. And then you top it all off, there's King DDD. Who, yeah, who, which is one of my favorite bosses in the game also. Listen, King DDD, like, almost stacks up against Bowser. Like, Bowser's my favorite character ever. But yeah. King DDD is really cool. I'm so glad he's in Smash now big fat penguin and he wears like a robe well, and, and, I, the, and you usually do you fight him in a wrestling ring in this one too uh, or no, a you, boxing you, ring you, you fight him that's that's in Superstar I think but in this one you fight him at the, the dream, Fountain of Dreams I think. oh yeah I think yeah, you're yeah. right yeah 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 and uh, which by the way uh, I, I'm just gonna drop this in. Music in this game is unreal. Yeah, I can't. Un, un, unbelievable. Yeah, this you guys have already heard some of it. I'll be putting more in. Like it's this game is as polished as it gets. So you fight DD. I guess it's spoilers, but this game's been out for almost thirty years. We could spoil it. Yeah, yeah. It's so funny. you fight DDD, and then it turns out that's not even the final boss. Yeah, he's being he's being controlled by nightmare. That's that is one thing that I do love about Kirby where it's like, all right, one second you're fighting a big fat giant penguin, now it's literally the Grim Reaper. Have yeah. fun. Bon and appetit. Dude, and he's scary. Like yeah. and, and so he's you pretty hard actually too. He, he Night, is hard. Nightmare's tough. Yeah. So you get a star rod and then you go up into the sky and then it almost turns into like a shoot 'em up. Yeah. Like where you're flying through space shooting the star rod at this fucking guy that looks like the Grim Reaper. <laughs> and you're right. And all of a sudden the game's like, oh yeah, so you've had it pretty easy. Yeah. Now you gotta try. Uh, yeah, get, and he's get, still beatable. Yeah, but uh, super, super beatable for sure. But it, it will take you a couple of times, especially because you have to fight him right off the tails of fighting DDD. Yeah, and I don't remember, but I don't believe they heal you. Yeah, I fights. don't remember. Yeah, don't, uh, maybe they do. I and the thing is, is like you, dude, you just spent what four or five hours playing through a game, which, like, admittedly, even when you have Kirby dashing and stuff, is a pretty slow paced game. You know uh, what? I, I'm just remembering this now. Sorry, but uh, Nightmare actually has two forms. Yeah, that's he does. why it's so tough. Yeah, because you have the one where you're fighting him with the star rod, like you typically would, where it's just like a bad guy on the screen, and he has a cloak, and every time he opens up the cloak, he has like a tornado. Yeah, and you him. have to shoot his and, like body. Yeah, you got to shoot it. Yeah, you gotta yeah, shoot his tornado, and then as soon as that's done, then it goes to the shoot him up, and that's harder. That's, like, that's the one where, where you're flying through space. Yeah, yeah, that if one's you, hard. If you shoot him at the wrong time, it's just gonna bounce off. Him. Yeah. Um, and it's a it's a hard transition because you spend hours playing this slow paced you know slogging along and then all of a sudden you're fucking yeah it it expects you to be like reactions like it's a shoot 'em up it's a straight up shoot 'em up it's like they just took it out of another game yeah <laughs> uh, but I love the way it ends uh, I thought that was so cool and I'm glad that it wasn't just King DDD because I like King DDD too much yeah for him to be just this complete asshole <laughs> and then it turns out yeah he's an asshole but yeah he was being controlled to make him into such a big asshole yeah exactly and I think I think at the end of this game they even say like King DDD apologizes for yeah. uh, being manipulated because like I don't think King DDD is really a bad guy um yeah i don't think so. I, I don't i don't think he's a really a bad guy because i i think he also is playable in kirby 64 i could i could be wrong about that um but. yeah i think you're right i'm just like i'm just reading right now king ddd steals the star rod that powers the fountain and gives pieces of it to his friends in an effort to stop nightmare kirby the player character of the single player game mistakenly believes that ddd stole the rod for evil and sets out to reunite the pieces when Kirby defeats DDD and returns the rod to the fountain, Nightmare goes in outer space to spread bad dreams, and Kirby follows him. So yeah, so DDD's yeah, not D even a bad guy. Yeah, he's, he's doing he's doing the right thing. I love he's, DDD. He's, doing, he's fucking yeah, rad. You know, I, I, there's not really story in the game, but I'm glad that somebody out there is doing enough research about these games. Oh, Wikipedia. Yeah. We got, thank God for Wikipedia. Thank like, God. It's because I'm not gonna lie to you. I have no fucking idea. What this yeah, story I would. Is. I, I would just be like, oh yeah, I'm, you play the game and then you oh, fight yeah. the penguin. For all I know, Kirby's actually the bad guy. Yeah. And everyone else is just like, dude, stop eating us. And Kirby. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm actually when you hungry. put it when you put it that way, Kirby absolutely is the bad guy. He kind of is. Yeah, yeah because yeah. all these people who are just trying to protect the world and Dreamland, they're just trying to protect everything. Yeah. He's, just, he's like, oh, fuck you. Just, I'm going to I'm literally going to murder you. For this. <laughs> it just runs around eating it's, all of you. It's like reverse Mario. <laughs> it, uh, dude, this game's got a ton of replay, legitimately a ton of replay because there's hidden yeah. stuff. You can play with different powers and things like it's so much fun sometimes to just experiment with the powers. Well, and, like and I, I like I love each world because they're like 
kind of themed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like every every level kind of feels the same, maybe a little with a little bit of difficulty spike. Yeah. But they do try and theme them and they give them like really fun names. I, I forget what they are, but there's like Orange Soda Valley yeah. and uh, something Garden, like Golden Garden or yeah. something like that. It's not oh, that, Vegetable Valley. Yeah, Vegetable Valley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and like that's and that's really fun, especially because it's all food themed, especially in a game where you have to be eating so much. Yeah, you know, it's definitely it's one of those little tiny things that they're like just toss it in there. That yeah, makes that makes the difference. It's yeah, it's a fucking and then like you said, the, you know, one of the mini games that you uh, you didn't bring up that I fucking love is the one where uh, DDD is throwing all the eggs at you. Oh yeah, yeah. So you have to hold B and then you open your mouth and he just peppers you with eggs. But then every once in a while, it's a bomb. And so you have to let go of B just enough to let the bomb go by and then open your mouth to eat more eggs. And the more yeah. eggs you eat, the more lives you yeah, get. Yeah, that, that one actually is great. I, I really enjoy that. That, that. that one's really fun. Uh, yeah. The mini games are as fun as, like, just, just this is a really fun game. Yeah. When I think of the NES, like, when I think of my favorite games on the NES, there's obviously the Marios, there's the Mega Mans. I think of the Contras, I think of the Ninja Turtles. I don't think of Kirby initially, but then every single time I play this game, and I've played through this game a lot, I'm like, this is a fucking really good it's a bang video game. game. Yeah. It's like, it sucks so hard that oh, I want to play more Kirby, but just don't make them such a bitch. Yeah, like, that, make them more, that, that's where make I'm at too, fun. because there's a lot of Kirby games I've straight up just skipped because I don't care. I legitimately don't even pay attention. He, um, he's yeah. the only big Nintendo uh, franchise IP that I I legitimately don't even pay attention when they announce a game yeah I, I'm like, like it's gonna I, suck and they always do it at E3 like it's a big deal I know. You know they're always like oh and there's a new Kirby game coming and then they show you uh, gameplay and you're like that Ugh. looks like Kirby that's but it shit. it obviously sells if they keep making them yeah right I, yeah because I mean, like you said like it's a good game for kids you know totally yeah. like I, I think if anybody like I think if someone were to buy for Christmas their kid a Nintendo Switch right now it would be that and Pokemon like yeah. those, those are the two that you get and even Pokemon is, I, I think, going in the same direction where they're just like, ah, it's for kids. Make it too easy. Yeah, make it yeah. way too easy. Yeah. Um, I just like, I wish they'd even just make it with like a hard mode. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like just make it so that we can play. I don't a know. Legend mode. Listen, you guys. Like even if you if you've written off Kirby, if you're like Kirby's for babies and Kirby's too easy, and blah, you're not wrong. But like I'm telling, I'm telling, I would, I would, I will, I will die on this hill. Play, play Kirby Superstar. On the Super Nintendo, it's on the it's on the SNES Classic, and it's on Nintendo Online. It is, and for the love of God, play Kirby's Adventure. It's on the NES Classic. It's on the NES Online. Those are the two, I think. And, Th they are yeah. the two. And and I I know you haven't played it, but Kirby sixty four, I'd say, is up there too. Um, well, and then, what? I was just gonna say, unfortunately for all of us, we'll never be able to play it because Nintendo doesn't like to give access to their fucking old games. I thought, I thought you were like, why? No, 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 no. Because no. it's fucking fun, yeah. Fucking Nintendo. <laughs> um, but uh, and I feel like there was like some that were passable on the Game Boy Advance like the uh, Kirby and the Amazing Mirrors pretty fun right um, but after that I was just like fuck. oh and uh, I think it goes without saying but Kirby Air Ride come on you guys oh yeah of course, Kirby Air Ride yeah. fucking rules oh and Kirby Mini Golf or whatever the fuck that game is Kirby's Dream Core I never played it oh Kirby's I never Dream played it oh I yeah I have played that game me and my buddy were, were playing that um, a few months ago because it was it's on the SNES online and we were playing it online and uh, it's the worst it's fucking horrendous it's terrible <laughs> right oh yeah it's, it's the no, worst it's, it's so bad because like it's a golf game but if you get if you get in the hole it's like it'll just shoot you back out unless you collect all the stars or something like that i don't i don't remember it's fucking terrible hey listen if yeah. you if you've been listening to this show for whatever amount of episodes and you're like oh i can't wait for them to do a kirby's dream course episode i really want a kirby's dream course episode that ain't you just had it yeah, there, there it was there you it just is. got a 15 second this was a two it was a bonus episode you yeah. just got your fucking kirby's dream yeah course and episode. then there was like uh because like as soon as Kirby's Adventure, like Kirby's Adventure must have been really popular because they started to juice the shit out of him because they also had that um, uh, that uh, Dr. Robotnik Mean Bean Machine ripoff that had Kirby in it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to remember. Well, what, I think, yeah. I think I don't know. I mean, I'm sure part of it was it was popular, but I, I'm sure that part of it, too, was just Nintendo, like, clearly realized that they have a ton of money in these established IPs like Mario. They're like, if we can establish more IPs, then we get more annual yeah. franchises that can make money. Kirby screams IP. Like, when you look at them, you're like, that's a... that's a Dude, I was in Japan. Yeah. I was I forgot all about this. I was in Japan last year. Kirby is fucking 
everywhere. Really? Fucking everywhere. There was like vending machines full of Kirby, fucking just stuffed animals of them, posters of them, gum, toys, this, candy. This is exactly what I'm talking about, though. He must have been popular, but the weird thing is, is that it almost felt like they were going to polarize Kirby the same way that they did with Mario, with like all these spinoffs and all that yeah. shit. And at some point, they were just like, fuck it, just make a Kirby game every three years or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And just and call it a day. And make money off was, them. Was there even a Kirby game on the Wii U? I don't. I don't remember. Cause Probably I, was. Because th- there was the Kirby Return to Dreamland on the Wii, which actually is pretty fun. Yeah, um, yeah they're probably... I mean, <laughs> listen, I, I've defended the Wii U to death because I like the Wii U, but like, even I'm like... I, I couldn't tell you all the games that are on the fucking... Like, yeah. uh, that poor system, just... Nintendo pretends that system never happened. Yeah, I like, I like the Wii U too, but I feel like every game that came out on the Wii U was like a safe version of the franchise. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like the, the I, I, I might get some shit for this, but like Super Mario 3D World, that's fucking the safest game of all time. I don't think it's that good. I like know? it, yeah. but I agree. It's not, it just certainly didn't do anything experimental. No, it, do, it does. It does absolutely nothing for the franchise. Whereas Odyssey, that does a shitload for the franchise. Yeah. Man, that does tons for the franchise. Yeah, the two, uh, the two best things the Wii U did were Mario Kart 8, Oh, which is which? One of the best games of all time. It absolutely is, and one debatably of the best games Breath of, of the Wild, but also that's on the Switch. On the Switch, yeah. And then um, I don't even have that game on Switch. Actually, I only have it on Wii U. There was one more on the Wii U. There. Oh, uh, the Wii launched Splatoon, and Splatoon's a right. fucking great franchise. Right. So they that, did do that. That being said, though, Splatoon One is fucking worthless now. Absolutely useless. Yeah, we useless. got Splatoon Two on the yeah, Switch. Yeah, it's a coaster and, now. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, I remember uh, a couple of months ago, I was like, I want to go back and play the first Splatoon because I remember really liking it. Just try, just try fucking yeah. connecting to the internet with that. I fucking guarantee. Thing. Yeah, it takes like forty minutes to get a match going, and even then, like fucking eight people drop out in the middle of it. Yeah, like, it's 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 nonsense now. It's fucking useless. Launch unless the, you, yeah, launch unless, the franchise though. Yeah, unless you like the the story mode, which actually the story mode in Splatoon is is pretty fun. I don't think anybody ever plays those, and I think they're pretty good. They are good. Splatoon shit. I, the shit. I fucking love Splatoon. Yeah, Splatoon. Splatoon rules. Just quickly, like I'm just looking it up, and uh, Kirby's Adventure is considered one of the best NES games by journalists. And then they have three different lists of the best NES games, and it's 11th, 27th, and 15th. 11th? I, man, I, I feel like that's too low. And I, I, is, 27th is vastly too low. Yeah. And I think 11th, like to me, there's a, a very solid argument to make that it's a if it's a it's a top 10 NES game. Yeah. And like I think I think if you're gonna say Kirby's Adventure is the 11th best NES game. I'd have to hear the other ten, but I m- I might let you slide on it. But yeah. for me, it's like it's my second favorite NES game. Of course, only I, surpassed by Super Mario Brothers Three. I like this better than I like the Legend of Zelda, which is saying a lot because I love that game. Yeah, well, the original Legend of Zelda is kind of it's yeah yeah it's kind of it's yeah. kind of outdated yeah. you know and, and I do I love it I absolutely love it and I've got the whole game memorized at this point. Yeah. but um, it's not. It, it doesn't age well. No, it has I don't think. Like, like for instance, like there's like that sword behind the fucking be, uh, underneath the cemetery that you practically fucking need to be Ganon, but it's under <laughs> a random tombstone, and there's a hundred tombstones. Why, why the fuck would you go around and push all of them if only one of them moves? It was yeah, I, I yeah, I played that game for the first time last year, like through to the end, yeah, and really enjoyed it. But yeah, it's it's just it's ancient. That's yeah, all it I, is. I I played then, it. Yeah, and to okay, so and like and to me, that's a great closing thought on Kirby. Is that like the original Super Mario Bros. is still fun, but it's obviously been done better. It's the ancient, original yeah. Zelda has definitely been done infinitely better. The original Metroid. I'm not. I'm sorry, but the original Metroid borderline sucks. Yeah, like 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 a lot of these first versions aren't that good. The original Kirby is not only playable today; it still is arguably the best version of, of Kirby. Kirby. Yeah. it is so good. It deserves to be in everyone's top ten list on the NES. Even if you're listening, I know I people that message me. I know people that listen to this show that don't like Kirby. I'm telling you, this is the one. And Kirby Superstar. Well, and even this is the one yeah. that is worth playing. Well, it's even fun. Um, even Castlevania, like like the first Castlevania is one of my favorite games of all time. Symphony of the Night's better though. Surpassed. Absolutely. By, so is Super Castlevania. Yeah. Like, yeah. Super just, Castlevania. 4, they've yeah, all done it better. Love that game. Um, okay, I'm trying to come up with a cool number to fucking score this thing out of. Let me just. I'm looking for some kind of stat or something. Yeah. Um, Sa- seven warp stars. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'll, that'll fucking work. All right. Yeah. Is, yeah. There's seven worlds. Seven. How many seven worlds would you give Kirby? I'd say, I'd say. You know what? I'm gonna give it six warp stars or six worlds. Six worlds out of seven. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. I, I love it. I truly do. It's I, really good. And even the lag doesn't hurt it. Yeah. I, I have no. I know it. Like I played through it on my Switch and like. I was like, I would have paid ten dollars just to buy this as like an indie game and play it right now. Yeah, like absolutely. I had no problem with it. Like if Nintendo was like, hey, like right now if Nintendo released like an eight or sixteen bit Kirby game and they're like, we just released it on the eShop for twenty five bucks, 
Done. Just Kirby's Adventure 2. Yeah. And just make it the same thing. <laughs> I, I would fucking buy that in a heartbeat. Done. It's all, that's um, all over. Yeah. No, I, I, I really love this game, and I'm, I'm glad that I got the opportunity to talk about dude, it. Dude, I'm glad someone talked about this. This game, we waited too long to talk Kirby's Adventure on here. Yeah. And quite frankly, guys, outside of Kirby Superstar, we may never talk Kirby on the show again. Yeah. So if you're a diehard Kirby fan, I hope you got your fix. And if you're a Dream Course fan, that was your episode. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know it, you it, know that there's like a huge Dream Course yeah. uh, uh, fan base that just are just waiting. One guy. Guy. Yeah. And uh, he's listening to this right now. And he's just like those sons of bitches. He's like hitting unsubscribe. Yeah, that's fine. Leave no, it's not. Star. Please don't unsubscribe. I <laughs> one need the star review. Yeah, I need. The, I need every listener. Please, uh, Bradley. Good job, buddy. Thanks for doing this. Hey, thanks for having me on, man. I, any chance to uh, get to talk about video games, I'm gonna take. Fucking rights, buddy. Go Kirby. Hell yeah. That's going to do it for this week's episode, ladies and gentlemen. Bradley, thank you for coming over and talking Kirby with me. And to every single one of you beautiful people, thank you for listening to our show. Thank you for telling people about our show. And thank you for helping our show grow to the mediocre heights that we have now reached. Onward and upward toward episode 100. Um, I'll be back next week with another episode. I'll be back on Monday with your Patreon exclusive episode for March. If you want in on that, patreon.com slash remember the game. Two bucks a month, plus you get a bunch of other stuff. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at member the game. We'll follow you back. Please leave me a good review. I haven't got a new review in quite a while. I don't know what they do, but I'm supposed to ask for them. So please leave me a good review. And with all that said, I'll be talking to you guys again in a few days about more old video games. Go play something. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Good enough. Take it easy, guys. Cheers. Thank you.